numbering system. I'm going to give you a numbering system with a basic seven angles. Now, there are hundreds of numbering systems in the Filipino martial arts. There are some systems that have over a hundred different angles. So what we're going to do is we're going to do basic seven just for the purpose of this DVD. This is going to be angle one. Angle two is a backhand. Angle three is a forehand. Angle four. Angle five is a straight thrust. Angle six is a thrust to the face. Angle seven is a thrust to the face on the backhand side. One more time. Angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, angle five, angle six, and angle seven. Okay, what I want to do is give you some basic striking patterns. I'm sure a lot of you have been doing this art before and you have a, a good idea what to do with the stick, but I just want to cover some things real quick. First thing is an abanico. Abanico is a fan, and you're hitting on both sides of the target. And we can do an abanico high, we can do an abanico low, we can do an abanico to the corners, high here and low here, high here, or we can go high here and low here. So this is the different striking with the abanico. Next thing we do is an upward figure eight. Upward figure eight is striking on the three and the four line like this. The upper figure eight can go into a horizontal figure eight. We can go horizontal figure eight and then work it into an upward figure eight. We have the downward figure eight which is basically striking on the one and the two line. So we can go angle one into angle two, the downward figure eight, into a horizontal figure eight, into an upward figure eight. The next strike is a redondo. Redondo is from the backhand side. It's just a big circle, and it whips from the wrist. We can do the redondo high. We can come down and go like that. The next thing is what we call the T pattern. There's a big T and a small T. Basically, I strike out, I come down, I come up, and I come back. One more time. We go this way, this way, up, and out. That's the small T. The big T comes out, comes down to the floor, comes up, and comes back. So out, down, up, and back, or out, down, up, and back. The next strike is the florette. <clears throat> the florette is done with the wrist and it makes little circles. Now, I can florette coming down on this line. I can come across like this. I can come upward. So the florette coming down, florette coming across, and the florette coming upward. Basic twirling is this is my downward twirl. It can be a strike. It can be used to confuse the opponent. It can be used to move the stick around. So we're coming down with this twirl. I can do the downward twirl off the backhand side, coming down frontwards, coming down backhand. I can do <clears throat> the florette and then come down like that. I can do my upward twirl into a downward twirl. Once you have all these different patterns going on, we do what we call Carenza, which is shadow boxing. You're taking all the different strikes you have, and you're just working around fighting imaginary opponents. You're just getting fluid with the stick. You're learning how to move around. You're learning how to get fluid. The T pattern, figure eights, the twirls. Now that we have all these patterns down, the first thing we're going to do is go into long range. Long range is when you can only reach your opponent's hand. You're not close enough to hit the body, and you're nowhere near close enough to using your checking hand yet. So we bring in Vic. Now, when Vic comes in with the angle one, I step back and I smash the hand. Here's where I can come in and work my T pattern. I can work the various strikes out in long range. When he comes in with the two, I meet the hand. I can do my horizontal figure eight. I can do my T pattern. I can come in with an abanico. When he comes in with the three, I smash the hand. I can come in and work all the various strikes that we did before, staying out here in long range. When the angle four comes, I can abanico, do my T pattern. When the angle five comes, I strike it at the hand with the abanico. I can come in with my horizontal figure eights. When the six comes in, I smash to the wrist. I can work the T pattern, strike from out here. 
the angle seven I smashed to the wrist, come in hitting the arm, working it like that. One of the next things we can do is we can do the redondo. When it comes in with the one, I just whip at the hand, follow up at the body. When the two comes in, I whip at the hand, whip it at the body. Angle three, I take the hand. Angle four, I take the hand. Angle five, I just take the hand. When angle six comes in, I can move out of the way and just come in redondo. Angle seven, I move out of the way and I can redondo. Okay, now that you've played around with long range, we're going to go right into mid range. Now, we bring out Vic, mid range is when you're close enough that your checking hand can touch the hand, your checking hand can reach the body, you're close enough for low line kicks, you're not quite close enough to use the butt of the stick yet, that's close range. So, this is mid range. Now, we're going to do a series of blocks and counters off the different angles. The first ones are with the point up. And then we have it if your point is down. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do blocks where we're meeting the force head on with the point up. When it comes in with the angle one, I do an inside deflection, I follow up to the body. One more time when it comes in, I hit and check, and I follow up. We'll do that one more time. I hit and check, and I follow up to the body. The next one will be angle two, my point is up, I'm going to go force against the Force, I'm going to do a drop stick. I'm going to follow up against the body. My point is up when the angle three comes. I do an outside deflection and I follow up like this. When the angle four comes, I meet it head on and I follow up against the body. When the angle five comes, I can get that out of the way with a twirl and then I follow up to the body. The angle six comes. I hit that right in there like that. I follow up to the body. Angle seven comes, I meet it in here, and I can follow up <clears throat> to the body. Okay, the next series of counters that these angles are going to do is the point is up, but we're going to go with the force. So we bring on big. My point is up when it comes in with angle one, I come underneath it and I pass it, and I follow up just like I did before. When the angle two comes, I pass it, and I follow up to the body. When the angle three comes, I pass it, I follow up to the body. When the angle four comes, I pass it, and I follow up to the body. The angle five comes, I pass it, I follow up to the body. The angle six, I pass that, and I follow up to the body. Angle seven, I pass that, follow up to the body. So that's meeting the force, and that's passing the force with the point up. What we're going to do now is if your point happens to be down. When it comes in with the angle one, I pass it and I come up like that. Do that one more time. I come underneath it, like so. My point is down when the angle two comes. I do a roof block. Do that one more time. I do a roof block and I follow up to the body. My point is down when the three comes in. I can pass it. When the angle four comes, my point is down, I pass it and I follow up to the body. When the angle five comes, I pass it and I follow up to the body. Angle six, I pass that, I follow up to the body. Angle seven comes, I pass it and I follow up to his body. What we're going to do now is we're going to meet these attacks head on with the point down. When the angle one comes in, we have what we call a high wing. Smash to the hand, use the checking hand, follow up to the body. When the angle two comes, my point is down, I do what we call a wing block. I follow up and hit to the body. When my point is down, the three comes in, I do a low wing, I follow up to the body. When the four comes, I do a low wing this way, I follow up to the body. When the five comes, I do a low wing that way, I follow up to the body. When the six comes, I'm still going to pass that because that's one of those tricky angles where you have to pass it. When the seven comes, I'm still going to pass that. I'm going to follow up to the body. So now we have meeting the force, passing the force with the point up. We have meeting the force and passing the force with the point down. So hopefully you'll work on these and you'll have an idea that no matter where your stick is, when an angle comes in to attack, you'll have a counter for it. 
Okay, what we're going to do now is the sombrata flow. The concept of the sombrata flowing, like we covered on the knife fighting tape, is we're going to go free flow back and forth with your opponent, and you're training working all the angles of attack, all the different lines, and you're basically improvising it in mid-range. It's a mid-range improvisation. Now, we're going to start this off with a basic three-angle sombrata, so you get the idea of going back and forth with uh, your partner. You bring in Vic. When Vic comes in with the one, I'm going to do the roof block. I come in with the two, he does an inside deflection. He comes in with the four, and I come in like that. Now, I come in with the one, he does the roof block. I do the inside deflection, and then he comes in with the wing. So, we go one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now that we have the three angle sombrata down, I'm going to introduce what we call the box pattern. Let me bring out Vic. When I come in with the one, he does an inside deflection, he comes in low. I do my wing block, I come in with a three, he does a wing block. He flips it down at my head, I do an outside wing, he does a roof block. Now we repeat the same thing on this side. One, two, comes in with a three, three, four, then five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This is what we call the box pattern, and it's a way of introducing the basic flow. Okay, what we'd like to do now, first we did the three angle sombrata, then we did the box pattern. Now we're just going to free flow for a little bit. I don't know what he's going to throw at me. He doesn't know what I'm going to throw at him. And this way we're improvising. What we're getting used to doing is handling any uh, angle coming at you, whether the point is up or the point is down. Sometimes we meet the force, sometimes we pass the force. So we bring on Vic. And we're just going to do a little free flow. Now that we have the different sombrata type flowing, we have the three angle sombrata, we did the box pattern, we did a little free flow for you. What we're going to do now is another flow drill, and this is called puño sombrata. Now, in the first type of sombrata, we're basically staying out in mid range, hitting and checking, hitting and checking. Now we're going to start to bridge the gap from mid range into close range. We do that in a drill we call puño sombrata, where you're starting to introduce the butt of the stick into the drill. So we bring out Vic. First thing we'll do is he's going to come in with an angle three. I'm going to do a wing block, and then I'm going to come in with the butt. Okay, one more time. He comes in with a three, and I shoot in the butt. From here, I'm going to flip it up, and he's going to block that. I'm going to stick my hand right into here. I'm going to hit his hand, and now I'm going to come in with a three. So he's going to block. He's going to come in with the butt. I'm going to block it, and then he's going to flip the stick at me. I raise it up to block, he inserts into that little square, stretch my hand, and then he comes in. So it's block, butt, flip, insert. Block, butt, flip, then insert. Okay, that was the first variation of Puño Sombrata. We're going to give you another variation of Puño Sombrata. We bring on Vega. When he comes in with the shot, block, I butt. When he blocks that, he's going to push that hand down and go to punch me. I'm going to pass it, and I'm going to hit his hand, and I'm going to strike. He's going to block, he's going to butt. I'm going to block the butt, and I'm going to come in with my fist. So we go one, two, punch, block, butt, 
punch, block, butt, punch, block, butt, punch. Okay, now I'm going to give you the third variation of Punyo Sembrata. I bring in Vic. I come in with the angle three, and he does a block, comes in with the butt. From here, I'm going to reach over and I'm going to go to hit his leg. And he's going to do the block. So then from here, I throw the butt and I step out of the way. So I block, he throws the butt, and I come over this way. So we have one, two, leg shot, one, two, leg shot. Okay, so now that we have three variations of Punyo Sembrata, we bring in Vic, and we're just going to mix them up a little bit. When I come in here, he butts, I'm going to punch, he can punch at me. From here, I go to the leg, go to the punch. From here, I can flip. Several types of disarms. We have the snake disarm where we use the hand. We have the concept of the vine disarm is where we're using the stick to disarm. And the third one is a strip slash quick release when you're grabbing the thumb. So the first thing we'd like to do is do the snake disarm to bring in Vic. When Vic comes in with the angle one, I do my inside deflection and I capture his hand with my empty hand. This is a snake. From here, I can strike, and I can just strip it out that way. So one more time, when he comes in, I do an inside deflection. I hit, and I strip out the stick. Now, when he comes in with the one, see how my stick is behind me this time? I strip it out that way. Do that one more time. When he comes in, I do an inside deflection, and I strip it out that way. The next snake is off the angle two. I do my outside deflection, and I snake his hand. I can strip it out that way, and then hit the body. Do that one more time from the outside deflection, and I snake the hand, and I strip it out that way. From the angle three, I can do my wind block, snake the hand, strip it out that way. Do my low wing block, strip it out of his hand that way. With the angle four, I can do my drop stick, I can hit the body and take it out that way. One more time, I do my drop stick, I snake his hand, I strike the body, and I strip it out like that. With the angle five, I do my wing, I snake the hand, it comes across like that, I can take it out. It comes in straight, I snake the hand, I can take it out that way. So that's the concept of the snake this on. The next one we'd like to do is the vine. The vine is where we're using the stick to do the this on. When he comes in with the one, I do my outside deflection. I hit him here on the wrist, and I whip the stick out that way. One more time, he comes in, I do my inside deflection, and I place the stick in here. From there, I just whip the stick out, and I strike.
right this way. With the angle one, I hit and I check, I can hit low, I can poke to the face, and I lay it right here on the nerve on his arm. I can wrench it away and keep his other stick, or I can just strip it away, I come down, hit, flip it out like that, following up. One more time, the vine from the angle one, just to hit, hit, lay the stick down, flip it out, follow up to the body. Okay, with well, the angle two now, I can do an outside deflection, I can thrust, scoop the stick out that way, and that's my vine from the angle two. One more time from the angle two, it's an outside deflection, I thrust, I scoop that with the stick. Okay, so we have the snake off the different angles. We have the vine off the angle one and the angle two. I'm going to bring on Vic. The angle three, we don't really do a vine off of because when he comes in with the three, there really isn't a place. I mean, I could come underneath and do that, but for all intents and purposes, it's not a very practical thing to do. So we move on to the four. From the four, I can do my wing block, and I take it just like I did the angle two. Or if my point is up, I can do the drop stick and thrust, and I can do the vine just like we did before. Okay, the next thing we'd like to do is the strip, the quick release. And I bring him back. When he comes in with the angle one, I hit and check. From here, I take his hand, I grab his thumb. I can thrust in on that angle, and I can disarm the stick. When he comes in with angle one, I hit and check. I can take it up this way, thrust in that way with the stick. When he comes in with the angle one, I can hit and check. I can take it all the way around that way and thrust with the stick. Depending on where my point is when he comes in with the angle one, I can hit him this way, pick his arm up and shoot stick right into him that way using the quick release, grabbing his thumb. One more time. When I take the thumb, I can strip it this way, I can strip it that way, I can come around and strip it out that way. So when he comes in with the angle one, I can hit, strip it out like that, sending the stick into him. Okay, the next thing we can do is when he comes in with the angle one, I can take the hand this way, and I come out and take the rest on that angle. One more time. I hit, I take the hand, and I come in using this angle right there, and the stick will hit the ground. Okay, what we're going to do now is the strip quick release from the angle two. We bring in Vic. When he comes in with the angle two, I can do an outside deflection. I can hit. Stick out. Okay, off the angle two, here's how we're going to do our strip or quick release off the two. I can do my outside wing and hit, and from here, I strip out the stitch. One more time from the angle two, I can do my wing, I hit, I strip out the stick. Okay, from the angle two, I can do my outside deflection, I can thrust. Strip the stick, send it into him. One thing about these disarms, be a little hard to show you on DVD, but I'll try, is a lot of the disarms, you're actually using your opponent's weapon as a projectile that you can aim if you're fighting multiple opponents. When Vic comes in, if he comes at me, say, with the angle two, and I hit and I hit him, I can use this and fire it in if somebody else is, say, attacking from over there, I can shoot it at him that way. Okay, I bring on Vic. When he comes with the angle two, I can hit and deflect. Shoot the stick right at an opponent who's standing over that way. Okay, another variation would be we bring on Vic. Say he comes in with the angle one. And I hit and I check. And I can send the stick flying that way to a distract the opponent or possibly hit him. Okay, using the snake as a projectile, when he comes in, I can hit and I snake it and I can send it flying that way. Okay, I'll give you another idea of using the quick releases. When he comes in with the one, I come under it and hit, and I can strip it out like that. 
Okay, I'm going to show you how to strip it out using the puño now. The puño will use this on the angle three a lot. When he comes in with the three, and I do my wing block, I just take the butt and I send it out that way. So one more time he comes in, I do a wing block, and then I hit it out with the butt. When he comes in with angle four, I can block and hit, strip it out like that. Angle four one more time, I do a drop stick, and shoot it out. Okay, another variation of the strip using the puño, let's say he comes in with the angle two, I block and hit. I can be underneath the hand as opposed to grabbing the thumb and stripping it this way. I catch it underneath and strip it. So when it comes in with an angle two, I block and hit and I strip it out like that. When he comes in with the angle four, I block and hit and strip it out with my hand being underneath. When the angle five comes, we're going to use the puño strip. I'm going to wing block and I'm going to take it out just like I did with the angle three. We're going to treat the angle three and the five basically the same way. I wing block, I take it out with the puño. Now, when he comes in with the thrust, I can take it out of the way like that and then strip it that way. Okay, what we'd like to do now is now that we did all these disarms from a static position, or just him feeding me and me knowing what's coming, we're going to go back to our sobrata flow, and I'm going to try and fit in a disarm wherever it feels right. Now, I'm not going to look for the disarm. It's when it's there, it's there. And you do this enough and you keep practicing it, you'll start to get that feeling of when you can disarm. So we bring out Vic. We just go into our flow and move around a little bit. And then I do a diss on. Okay, so we move around. Do the diss on. Take it out that way. And chokes using the stick. So what you've seen so far is we have the stick for a striking weapon out in long range. We can get in close, we can capture his hand, we can disarm the stick. Now I'm going to show you how to apply locks, throws, and choke outs using this stick. Now one of the best places to insert a lock, a throw, or a choke out is from the snake. So we bring in Vic. First technique I'm going to do is when he comes in with the angle one, I'm going to hit and check, I'm going to snake, I'm going to grab this end of the stick, and I have my first lock. Okay, I want to do that one more time when he comes in. I hit and check, and I snake. I can hit. I come up this way, and I grab the other end of my stick, and I just crank the wrist down. Okay, one of the next things we can do from that position is I hit and check and snake. Now, from here, I can place the stick directly there, and he loses the stick. I just strip that out. I have the choke this way. Now from this position, I can come under here, and I can lock him this way. I can take my alive hand, and I can reach behind now, and take the other end of the stick and do the choke out. Okay, let me do that one more time. When he comes in, I hit and check. I do the lock. He loses the stick. So I come out this way. Now, from this position, I can do a complete takedown if I turn my body this way and just take him down. Okay, let's bring Vic out again. When he comes in with the one, we hit and check and we go into our snake. This was our first lock. This was our first takedown. The second one was coming under the throat and taking him down from there. So what we do is after I strip it out with my arm, I come into this, come along this way. I'm <clears throat> putting pressure in the throat. From here, if I want to choke him out, I reach back and I take the stick on the other end and I can choke him out from here.
Okay, another one we can do is when he comes in with the angle one. I hit and check and I snake. And I put the stick under the arm like this. And I can take the I can take him down or I can just hold him here, putting the pressure on the bicep like that. One more time. When he comes in, I snake. I hit under here. And I have the lock this way. And we can take him all the way down from there. Okay, now let's go to the angle two and we bring out big. When the angle two comes in, we hit and check, I snake, but now I come over the top and I can apply the arm bar. Now, I'm digging the stick into the tricep right under the elbow. I can pull that in and take them down that way. I can get in real close and just squeeze the muscle. One of the things I can do from here is I can take the tip of my stick and put it underneath and I can use this as a lever down here on the ground. What I can do is a law enforcement technique is I can take that foot and put that foot over the stick, crushing him that way, so I can reach for my handcuffs and my walkie-talkie, and I don't need my hands, but I'm applying a lot of pressure with the stick on the tricep in here like that. Okay, let me do that one more time. When Vic comes in with the two, I hit and check. I come around here and I take him down. I put the tip underneath. And then I step on the stick this way. From the other angle now, so you can exactly see what's going on down here on the floor. When Vic comes in with the two, I hit and check. I pull him in like this. I put the tip on there and I take him down. And this is where I step on the tip of the stick. And this is totally immobilizing him on the floor so I can have my hands free. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of chokeouts using the stick. The chokeouts are really good because you don't have to use lethal force when you're striking at the guy. You can just stop either the blood or the air, and you can just use it as a pain compliance. When he comes in with the two, I hit and check, and I bring him down. Now, instead of taking him all the way to the floor from here, I just come around this way. And I can choke him out from behind. I have his arm locked. I have the stick right in the side of his neck. I can take him down like this. We can hold on to him in here. And okay, I'm going to do that choke out one more time off the angle two. I come in and I hit. Come into my arm bar. Take the stick and I put it around the neck and I pick him up. And then I lock it behind my own head so I can apply the lock this way. Now another thing we can do while we're in here is we can take this and we can put the butt right in the windpipe and we can choke them out this way. So we either have the lock here like this, or we have this in here like this. Okay, here's another choke out slash lock we can do, is when he comes in with the angle two, I hit and I can hit to the head. I switch this around here like this. So now I have the arm bar and I also have the choke out. I can strip the stick out using my leg I can take him down from here, I can hit to the back of the knee and take him down, or I can just choke him out. Now, when I'm in here, I can just let go having the stick with my left hand, take him down with an arm bar, I can come out this way, put the stick back in my right hand again, stick it underneath, take him back down on the ground. All right, let's do that one more time, we'll go through that whole sequence. When he comes in with the two, I hit and check. I put the stick in here, and I take them this way, disarm that out. From here, I take my stick out, and I have it with the left hand, and I have them down into an arm bar this way. I wrap that around that way, I put the stick back in my right hand, and I take them down from here. Now I can do what we did before, I can step on the stick, I can hold the stick that way, and uh, I have my hands free. If I have to fight more than one person right now, I can keep this guy down by putting pressure on his hand. And I can either reach for a radio, a pair of handcuffs, or I can fight somebody else if they were trying to come up on me. Okay, I'm gonna give you a, another sequence now. This one's gonna take place when we're on the ground after we do the takedown. When he comes in with the angle two, and I hit, take him down from here. Once he goes down, I throw my leg over. Now I can go this way. If I had to fight multiple opponents, I could turn around to this way, still keeping his arm locked. Turning around this way, coming back again this way, coming back again this way. I can sit on him, I 
can put the stick in this hand now. I can have my hands free. I can take the stick out. I can come back around to this way. Now that we just did all that grappling and all those lockings with the stick, the different choke downs, the different takedowns, starting off with the snake, what I'm going to show you now is how to counter the snake so you don't end up being locked or choked out or thrown down. So we bring out Vic. When I give Vic the angle one, he's going to inside the flexion, he's going to snake on me. From here, he can do the lock. He can do the takedowns on here. So I don't want this to happen. So we're going to counter the snake. When he comes in and he snakes on me, the first thing I do is I'm going to jerk my hand down. I'm going to punch him in the face. I'm going to reach over and I can take him here and lock him this way. Let's do that one more time. So it's an inside deflection and a snake. I bring my hand down. I punch. I step around this way and I put the arm lock on. And I can take him down and do everything we just did before except doing it on the right side, now we're doing it here on the left side. One more time with the snake. I jerk that down, I punch him, and I lock. The next thing we do is when he comes in and snakes, I trap that hand. I punch to the face that way, I strip out the stick, and then I apply the lock. I take that, I strip that out, I punch him in the face, and I come around applying the lock. The next thing we can do is we're going to sacrifice the stick. When he comes in, I throw the stick at him, and I can take his stick from him. We can do some type of a lock from here. I have the stick. We'll go like that. Okay, we're going to show you. We're going to sacrifice the stick again. When he comes in the snakes, I throw it at him. I take his hand, I can work that out. Let's cover these basics one more time and bring in Vic. When he snakes, the first thing I do is I cup that hand, strip his stick, I can punch him, I can do the arm lock. Okay, the next thing we do is when he snakes, I punch him first, then I strip the stick. Then I come around and do the lock. The next one is when we sacrifice. When he comes in, I throw the stick. I can either strip it out with this hand, or I can switch it to this hand, and strip it out that way, do a takedown from here. The next thing I'd like to do <clears throat> is a little harder, it's a little fancier, but I'm basically going to twirl the stick in the midst of his snake. So when I come in with the one, I reach out and I re-grab the stick. I can hook that out like that and then disarm it. We try this again. When it comes in, I re-grab the stick, I hit to the face, I can reach out this way. I can hit, disarm it that way. Another way, when it comes in, I re-grab the stick that way. And I can throw him this way. Okay, another thing to do when it comes to the snakes, I re-grab the stick. And I come in behind, we can do the choking out that we did previously. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to cover trapping range with the stick. In a, our particular system of Filipino martial arts, when we work our trapping range, we use a drill we call Higod Ubud Lubud, which means to tie and to untie. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this, so we're just going to cover the basic shell really quick. Let me bring out Vic. When Vic comes in with the butt, I'm going to block. I'm going to raise, I'm going to trap his elbow, and I'm going to hit with the butt. So he's going to raise, trap, and come in with the angle one. So I come in, the angle one, he comes in with the angle one. So the block, raise, trap, hit, block, raise, trap, hit. So this is the basic shell of Luba. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is from this position, instead of going one for one, I go one, then he comes in with one. I come in with the angle one, he comes in with the angle one. After he gives me the angle one, I'm going to come in with the angle four. Okay, so we're going to go angle one for angle four. So I go one, he goes four. And then he raises, I come in with the four. So we're working the low shot and the high shot. Low backhand. High forehand. 
So one, two on, and one. Okay, the next angle we'd like to do is the angle five. The angle five is the straight and thrust. We're going to do the vertical gun ting for that. When he comes in with the five, I parry, raise, I trap, and I hit. So, we're working with the straight thrust with the angle five. Once you get this concept down, you come back in with the angle one, and then the angle five. So, we're going to get to the point where we're improvising this, and he doesn't know what's coming in, and I don't know what's coming in, so we can work it kind of like we're spawning. There's angle five, there's angle one, angle four, angle four, angle one, angle five. Okay, the next angle we're going to put in now is we're going to put in the angle two, which is the high backhand with the butt. So when he gives me the one, I come in with angle two. He's going to raise, trap, and hit. And he gives the angle two. So raise, trap, and hit. So now he's doing the angle two. I go to angle one, angle four. I go angle two, angle one. Come in with the angle five. So using the angle two, the angle one, and the angle five, we're basically doing a little sparring. What we're going to do now is we're going to mix up the order we throw them. Sometimes I can come in with a two, sometimes I can come in with a four. I don't have to follow any specific pattern. I just want to mix it up. So I'm basically going to take the lead and I'm going to throw different angles in on Vic and he's going to pick them up and we're going to show you how to freelance this and row a little bit. Angle two, I come in angle four, I come high, I come low. I come in with a two, then a one, then a four, then a five, I come high, I come low. I can mix this up basically. We slow it down. Angle two, angle four, low four, high, I come low. I come High, I come straight. Okay, the next thing I like to do is I'm going to throw in a little flip off the angle too, just a little abanico, and he's going to have to get that up and protect his head. So when I go angle two, I just kind of wing that flip. I go angle two and I flip. When I go low, I go high, I put it in the flip. Okay, good. The next thing is off the angle one is the abanico. Now he's going to block the abanico by just kind of pushing my arm away from his face. When I come in with the one, I'm going to try and abanico him in the head. He's going to push that away. So now we're defending against the angle one, the angle two, the angle five, the angle four. I've got an abanico from this side. I've got an abanico from that side. variations going on in it. I'm going to show you some techniques to do out of hoobud. Now we can do anything out of hoobud. We can do striking, we can do trapping, we can do grappling, we can do takedowns. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick trap to do. We start out doing the hoobud and we're going one for one. When I give him the angle one and he blocks that, what I'm going to do is jerk that down and hit. Come back up and hit and refeed the angle one. So I can freelance it with the angle two, I can come in with the angle five, I can mix it up like we did before. But whenever I get that shot, I'm just gonna jerk that down and then hit. And I hit. Okay, so now that we have that, when 
I turn that down and hit, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come around and I'm just going to put in my choke like we did earlier. And we did it static before, but now we do it out of movement. So one more time out of the bud. We're doing the show. We're throwing in the different angles. I come in and hit, and I just place this in here like that, and I go for my choke. Another thing we can do is we can be in here and do blood. When I come in with the backhand, and when he blocks the backhand, I want to reach up, but I'm using this hand to make sure, because if I pick my hand up, I'm just going to get hit. So when I give him this, I reach up this way, and I come across, and I can do an arm bar. Now, from the arm bar, I'm not going to push him all the way down. I'm going to let him get back up again. And then he's just going to give me the butt. And now we're back in here. So I give him this, and I hit. I do my takedown. I'll let him get back up. And we go back into the hula. So I can go here. I can take him down this way. Grab the stick, and I go back into my hula. I give him the angle too, I hit, I do an arm bar, and then we go right back into the hula. Boom. Take him down, come back up, we go right back into it again. I can hit and hit, we go right back into the hula. I can hit, I can lay the stick across, take him out that way. I come out, I bring him down here like this, just switch that and go back into the hula. When he gives me the angle one and I block, I can snake that, go into any one of my locks. So then I come back out, and go right back into the hula. I snake that and I choke, and I go right back into the hula. From here, I hit, go into here, come right back into the hula. Here, and I hit, I go right back into the hula. Backhand, I hit, I take him down, we go right back into the hula again. So it becomes a game, it becomes a little way of sparring. You can work all the various locks. I can come out like that, I can strip the stick. Instead of stripping the stick, is then we gotta stop and pick it back up again. I just say I know I can do it from there, and we go back in. I take it out, so okay, there's a strip. We go back into the hula. I hit, do my choke out, Come right back into the hula. Snake the stick, come into here, go right back into the hula. Come out here, I'm back in. Backhand, we go back in. So you see, there's all kinds of locks, there's throws, there's takedowns. Anything you do static, you can do it out of movement. You can, one of the things you can do is we can do the sombrata like we did before and go right into the hula. I do a lock, he gets out, we go back into the hula. I kind of take a step back, and now we're flowing into the sombrata. And now we're back into the hula. Disarm, snake, locking, all of this, we can 